Hello everyone, thank you so much for coming down to another reaction video with me. I hope that you are ready for me to react to myself. Now before I get into this, I want to say, do you want to improve your singing? Or do you find it hard to improve your singing on your own? No matter how many resources you look up, no matter how many people you ask on Quora, no matter what you find on YouTube, then make sure you head on over to my website where I have not only a course about singing, but also step-by-step step how you can go from basics slash good to pro. There are not just ways on how to sing, but also different things that I will break down for you that involve different paths after you learn the basics you can branch out to, such as harmonizing, singing classical music, singing musical theater, singing jazz, singing whistle notes like Mariah Carey. You can find a lot of good stuff there, so I highly recommend you go to my website the link is right here if you want to. And with that out of the way, let me say just one more thing. If you enjoy what you're about to see, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and click the notification bell next to it. And if you want a particular reaction for me to do for you, make sure you comment that in the comment section below this video. And let me break down what I am reacting to. This is called Sing Better in Seconds on this Vocal Coach's YouTube channel. When the pandemic hit of COVID-19, she could not go out anymore and talk to strangers and ask them to sing better in seconds with her. So she started doing it virtually with her subscribers and she's still doing it. That doesn't mean she's gonna stop anytime soon, <laughs> but that also meant that you had a certain way that you could do it. And the way that you are to do it is by subscribing to her YouTube channel, following her Instagram, and liking the hashtag social distancing post, the most recent one, and then comment below that who you are, where you're from, and what you want to get out of this series if you were to be selected. And she selected me for this one, and I'm going to be reacting to it. So, her name is Tara Simon. Her YouTube channel is Tara Simon Studios. Let's begin. What's up guys? I'm Tara with Tara Simon Studios and today is virtual Sing Better in Seconds Day. Today I'm going to be calling William Rimmer. We're going to find out where in the world he is, why in the world he wants to be on Sing Better in Seconds, and I'm going to show you how I am making William Sing Better in Seconds with me today. Let's go call William. Before we even start the content of this video, I want to make sure that you realize that was an intro video. She's been on YouTube for quite a while and it's just the fact that she's been doing that type of series for so long that she was even able to make an intro video to the series. I think you should really check her out because she knows her stuff, especially since she's the one and only person who has fixed me with what she's about to show me in this video. William, how are you? I'm doing okay. Thanks for being the best part of my channel and for being super brave and bold to be on here today because I know putting yourself out there for the world to see and being humble enough to be teachable and take critiques and, and tips and tricks is not easy. So I commend you for that. Take a big breath with me in through your nose and out through your mouth. We've got this. We're going to do this together. We're all good. Yeah? This is yeah. fun. Singing is fun. So <laughs> this is something that happens every time. So it's not like I can't handle it. I'm just okay. more gobsmacked than I usually am. <laughs> That's the best word ever. Gobsmacked. It's the one you use. Yes, I know. I got it from some some guy in London when I was there. He said it. And I'm like, it's like the coolest word ever. I'm gonna steal that. I'm gobsmacked. <laughs> so William, tell me where are you in the world first of all? Um. I'm also in Florida, just not in the West Palm Beach area. I'm just more like around Orlando. I'm in one of the suburbs. Okay, perfect. Sunny South Florida. And you're how old? Uh, 18. I'm about to be uh, 19 in a month and two days. Okay, happy early birthday to you. And why do you want to be on Sing Better in Seconds? What do you hope to get out of me today? What are your sticky pain points in singing? <laughs> the main I really need to say something quickly. I was nervous the entire time, like you could see, you can see that my face is flushed. I am not flushed right now because I'm re-recording my reaction to this video <laughs> because the technical difficulties are astoundingly deafening in the last time I tried to film it. So I'm not really 
nervous anymore, but I am going to recap on what I said in the last one. One, yes, I was nervous, like I already said, but two, that's why you need to make sure that you have a list in front of you of what you want to say to such a person in, in this type of an opportunity. Because if you're anything like me, you get so heated up in the moment and you're just like, well, then you forget to slow down and think about what you wanted to say. It was too late for me at this point. Anyway, let's just keep going. One thing that I want to uh, get better at is uh, taking my contemporary style of chest and mix into a more operatic style. And I mean like as operatic as you can get, not just overall traditional sound. And the same goes with my falsetto. And if it's already like that, just like tone it down a bit, if anything. Okay, interesting. Like, trying to switch styles. If yeah. of each part of my voice. Okay. And what's your desire? Why is your desire to switch styles from pop to opera or contemporary, you mentioned, to opera? I guess just the fact that I have the falsetto most accurately representing yours and a soprano slash coloratura. And okay. that just makes me want to make the same transition slash okay. effort with my chest. I don't want to be sounding like a female only if I'm to attempt opera. Okay, sure, sure. But you know that there are like countertenors and, and men who have very, very high parts in opera. You know that that's the, a thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. I actually am trying to get better at baritone op repertoire because that's okay. what I think my voice type is. What I should have mentioned right there was why I think I'm a baritone. That's another thing I should have written down. Um, the fact that I knew, let's just say I had the comfortable range more accurately representing a baritone than a tenor, or at least a baritone overall. Okay. Let's continue. All right. Well, I'll be the judge of that and let you know what I think. So what are you going to sing for me today? <laughs> I could have danced all night. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. So, um, William, sing me the chorus of I could have danced all night. I'm going to hear you pick whatever key you want, and then we're going to do some stuff, okay? I could have danced all night, I could have danced all night, and still have begged for more. Oh, no. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand things I never done before. I'll never know I made it so wet. <laughs> that face. One thing interesting about that face is that I thought about my old chorus teacher in high school. She was the best. She was like the best, not just in being quirky and young in addition to all of us, but she was also herself and very, very patient and very, very kind to all of us. She was able to put her foot down when she needed to, trust me. I felt that, but <laughs> she was so amazing and sometimes how she smiled looked exactly like that. Thanks, Tara. You just gave me a little bit of nostalgia. Exciting, while it wants my heart to flight. I only know when he began to dance with me. I could have danced, danced, danced. Okay. <laughs> we went way off the arc there, didn't we? Okay. Okay. So something I didn't expect when I first watched this. You have different audio than expected. I thought it was going to be the audio from the camera microphone. And it's apparently the audio from the webcam. Hmm. Who knew? Oh, cool that you can show off range like that. Um, and cool that you stayed on pitch, acapella. That's really cool. Um, let's talk about let's talk about vibrato. All right. So vibrato should come as a result of proper abdominal support, and it, it's basically your your vocal cords, your larynx, undulating like this in a wave. Okay. 
but what I'm hearing in your voice is this sort of like manufactured vibrato that's coming instead of from the bottom up, it's coming from your larynx itself. And that, and that is where the support is, is uh, being generated from. And so it almost, it's like this sort of like, um, like, like goatee, like, uh, 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 like, like throat, like a lot of vibrato, right? Do you hear that? Yeah. Now it gets better when you open your head voice because in order for you to sing in your head voice, you have to use more abdominal support. So I believe that we can work on that and I can give you some tools and tips to kind of redirect the way that you create vibrato within your voice because I do think that it was better on the higher end. Still a little hint of it still, but like it was, it was usually a lot better. So before she says this, next thing I want to make note of something. You know how when she said, let's talk about vibrato, I was just like, that's because I've been struggling with vibrato before uh, she essentially fixed mine, literally. I was so serious about wanting to fix it because I didn't know it at the time, but if she knew something was wrong with my vibrato, I was very willing to fix it because it has been worse in the past. Far worse. And I did not think I could get any better, but if she knew I could be better, then I was willing to accept that and willing to see what she had to say. Now, of course, everything that she explained about vibrato I already knew based on her other videos, but I just wanted to follow along with it because I didn't know what she meant at the time, sadly. Now that I'm looking back, I'm just like, holy crap, she's right. <laughs> I, I... Now, I'm not saying that I struggled with the absolute basics, but I did have a tiny bit of splitting between my phonation of my voice, which basically means using my voice and the support. There's a slight split between those two. I am sorry. I think that you're mistaken. I don't think you're a baritone. I think you're more of a tenor and you do have like this higher extension kind of falsetto thing. Um, there, it's not necessarily range. A lot of people get this wrong. It's not necessarily range that is what classifies your voice, right? It's, it's the timbre and texture and the, the baritone range is it has more depth to it more a little more beef to it and and i hear this very nice kind of um kind of forward clear crystal like bellish sound that's thinner in your voice and that's there's nothing wrong with that i just you know i want to make sure that we're calling a fish a fish and not a fish a bird you know so the main thing though for you is not necessarily pitch recognition it's not range it's diaphragmatic support that leads to proper vibrato. Does that make sense? Okay. Something I did not understand at that point. She said I was a tenor. Now I'm starting to see it. But the only reason why I didn't see it was because I naturally have a better grip of the lower end and lowest notes of my tenor range than I do my highest. I mean, for crying out loud, I haven't even been able to hit a full on high C before. Yeah, I'm a true tenor, and yet I can't hit a high C without flipping to falsetto. But here's the reason why. Because of that, I've always been looking into baritones and thinking, why do I not sound as big as those around me when I'm singing a cappella in church? No, seriously, in the church we sing, we sing an a cappella slash harmony. And I've always wondered, am I just a really, really high baritone? Because I do feel weighed down more than most tenors if I am a true tenor. And then I came across a term used for tenors, the Heldon tenor, which basically means that they are actually meant, naturally meant, to sing the lowest repertoire that a tenor can possibly sing without entering the baritone area or territory. It feels like an equal combination between the weight of a baritone and the tonal quality of a tenor. So tonal quality can't say everything about your voice, but it can give you an idea. The only thing is weight. Where are you weighed down at most often? Where do you find it difficult to transition no matter how good your training becomes? Where do you find it most difficult to transition through no matter how good of a singer you are and how much intuition you have with your voice and how low can you sing because of that weight. I have definitely felt like I had a, let's just say more floaty voice than those around me. So that might have to do with my current stature, which is thin man and still tall enough to be able to sing low. But I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know. I ain't a baritone Martin because I can't go above 
the G below high C very well. I mean, I can sometimes get it a whole tone higher than that on a good day, a solid whole tone, but yeah, I just, I just can't sing as high as most tenors very easily. It's so weird. I am a tenor, but I can't sing like most of them. So basically, I'm saying that's why I felt like she was wrong, but now I can see that it's up to the person in question at this point, because I could be a baritone for all I know, I could be a tenor for all I know, I'm just listening to my voice and how it feels on that day, which is something that you should listen to more often than labels. Labels are important for determining your limitations, naturally, and thinking, oh, that's why but it shouldn't define who you are as a singer. So are you willing to try to work on that? Nor should it define what you should sing or not. When it comes to the limitations, yeah, you can use that as well as your natural strengths to determine what to sing and when to sing your weaknesses, but anything else? Uh, label isn't useful as much as the definition of that label is. With me? Yep. Yep. Oh. Okay, all right, let's do it. So, um, what I first want you to do, we're, we're just going to, and, and by the way, for those of you who are watching, I don't have expectations of William being able to to shift this, this very like ingrained habit today. But what you're gonna see today is hopefully um, the beginnings of him being able to hear what it, how it is and feel how it is to do it right and then build that muscle memory in so that he can implement that specific technique and modification into a song and be able to do it throughout. So I just want the first line. I could have done Stone Night and really that long hold on danced is what I'm looking to improve on. So instead of I could have done where it's coming from your throat, okay? I want you to just, without vibrato, hold the note this time. I could have done still night. Let's try not even to do vibrato for a second and see what that looks, feels, and sounds I'm like. Okay. It down. I could have done still night. Ah, uh, you hear it wanting to come in though. A uh, uh, little stutter. That was good on dance. The all night was all night. A little bit. Uh, I'm gonna have to do that again. All night. Try. I could have danced all night. Better, better. Bit. Yep. Mm hmm good. Now, are you sitting or standing? I'm sitting. Ah, problem number one. Let's just sit up as tall as we possibly can then, because we've got to use our abs, okay? We've got to use our abs. So... I kind of didn't know how she was going to deal with that, but once I started looking back at the footage, I realized this is definitely something she could work with in keeping with the content and not having to have a technical distraction, which is what she decided to cut. Basically, based on how the situation was set up, technically speaking, she was like, can you do this? And I was like, uh, no, it's because of this technical situation. And she's like, ah, gotcha. And that's when she cut back to where she was talking about. I want you to, as you go into I Could Have Danced, I want so I want you to push into your diaphragm like someone's giving you the high month maneuver in and up. I could have danced. I did vibrato because it's habit, but I could have danced all night. Okay. I could have danced all night. Good. Now on night, don't go wide, go long. All night. I could have danced all night. Good. Good. Okay. Now, without <laughs> trying to add no. vibrato, just think of relaxing the straight tone. That's it. We're not relaxing the straight tone into vibrato. We're just, if vibrato happens, great, but we're just thinking of relaxing the straight tone. And whatever happens, whether it continues to be straight tone or not, it's fine. Let's just have that thought. Same thing, different thought. I could have danced all night. Good, good. Do it one more time like that. I could have danced all night. Good, good, good. I, little, I want a little more awe in your night. It's a little more night. It's a little whiny. I want all night. I could have danced all night. That was better. Good. So I still hear a little... Like she said, go a little bit longer. So I like really emphasized it, not just in my mind, but physically too. I didn't even expect it to be that long once I looked back at the footage. I could have danced all night. A little bit of the throat in there. Um, 
And this is, again, this is going to be something that's a long-term kind of kind of effort here, William, because this is something that I can tell you've been doing for a really long time. But I, I can say this. This thing right here? Operatic vibrato especially. Of course, is what I just showed. Everything is diaphragmatic. It comes from the... When she was having me do the long space to happen. It's also going to be something that's in the course. If you wanted to see what I just did, what in the world I just did here. Let's just say this, it's going to be around the lesson called mouth space. Depths, even the pelvic floor up. Forget about the diaphragm, which is all that, right? It comes from the depths all the way up. And right now, the way that you're producing sound is very throat up. And so you would be someone that I would highly recommend getting into lessons with to change that because it's going to be a habit and a, and a muscle memory shift. You're going to find that you're going to have days that's super frustrating at first and then you're, you're going to have this light bulb moment one day and you're going to be like, oh, that's, that's it. And your coach will be able to say, that's it. That's exactly right. So then do the same thing over and over to create the muscle memory that you need to make it into a habit so that you don't have to think about it anymore. It's just something that you do because you have good tone and you have good range and, you know a lot of guys don't have the the capability of switching and controlling the notes in their falsetto and you do but we got to get that vibrato reined in for sure because the way it's being produced right now isn't healthy for your voice and it's not sonically pleasing to the ear especially if you're wanting to change from something more contemporary to opera does that make sense um, yes, absolutely. I was just wanting to give it one more try. Yeah, let's do it. Use your hands and give yourself like a little Heimlich as you go. I could have done, it's like push your abs against your hands against. So it's, it's this, like your abs are going forward because your hands are going in. You're, you're protecting your organs from this like, push that's happening no, from your hands. You dare go it's got to come from right there. Okay. That's what she's I could have danced all night. Something about that hand going on my neck. Oh my goodness. I developed a bad habit within the first year of singing to literally feel on my throat when I was doing vibrato or not, and that's how I would tell. Like, ah. And I thought that's what it would be like to see if I was doing it right or not. When in reality, I should have been focusing on this and letting it come naturally, such as like this. The night was better. Did you hear how the vibrato came from the night? Yeah, I heard it, a I heard it better. For me, I don't know why, but whenever it's like, really like a vibrato it just i can't hear it as well the, the lighter one though was better yeah i think it's better too it's just it's hard for me to get used to that sound from anything not just my own voice now when i said that i just meant trying to notice people's vibrato when it's in the background because sometimes when i would be listening to certain songs it would be noticeable at first because i was just like wow what an amazing singer and all i would notice about them was their vibrato. Obviously their tone and their vocal registration transitions were amazing, but the one thing I was talking about there was understanding when and where the vibrato of other singers was coming from. It was like barely noticeable. It was like so much in the background that I was just like, am I, am I going crazy? So I felt like to prevent that, I had to start amplifying mine, but you don't amplify it. You can increase the amplitude, such as going from like, but you really shouldn't be trying to make it overtly stuttery just for people to notice. Mm, okay, right, and you're pointing to here. What... Something about her face, though, was quite interesting. It looked like she was mad at me. <laughs> oh, amazing. When you're saying that, like, you know that it's come, the other vibrato is coming from here. Mainly, yeah. Yeah. Because you can feel it. I mean, I, I could feel, oh, God, I can totally feel where that's coming from. Dance versus da. It's like almost like a stutter versus a wave. And we want the wave. That's what vibrato is by definition. We don't want to stutter. We want to wave. So the night, that is a little bit of that light bulb turning on. We want that everywhere. It doesn't have to be, vibrato doesn't have to be this overt, prevalent thing, guys. It's just sort of like, an accessory to your voice. It is not the main article of clothing. Sorry, okay? It's like, you know, a cute earring. 
or something, you yeah. know? Little hairband, I don't know, for a guy, like a bow tie, you know? Yeah, okay. So I think for you, it's all about the diaphragm. I, for someone, if you're like William, I would recommend doing crunches a day, planks, really getting your, your muscle memory engagement from your mind to your diaphragm and your, your core, like your clock muscles in your core, that's what's going to create the vibrato from the ground up, not from the throat up, to get rid of that stutter and start moving into that wave. Does that make sense, William? Yeah, and any yeah. chance I can just do it on a lower note? Like, to make sure, it you up. can try it. Uh... Is that better? That's much better. Yes. So you know, you have it in you. You just need to be able to take that, do it one more time. Ah. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Now you it's so the funny how where she's that's zooming coming from versus the other. Yeah. It's so funny how she's being cropped in like that just because of her reactions. I love it. Big difference. One. The way one's a stutter, yeah? Yeah, let's call it what it is, it's fine. She said, let's call it what it is, it's fine. <laughs> it's because she could tell that I was being like, mm, okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, how she has such patience for all of us. Now, I, I haven't taken lessons from her. I don't know how she is in lessons, but if she has been able to help me with this alone, then she can help me and everyone else who aspires to be a singer like truly has an aspiration and desire for it to be the best they can possibly be for their goals. Another reason, I feel like as a tenor, I am the loudest with the sound of my voice because I'm not really able to float up to the top. I mean, I can go high like tenors and enter the generally accepted tenor range to an extent, but it's going to be touched the way a baritone would touch it because I can't really go that high and that's why I thought it was a baritone. Now I didn't know there was such a thing as a tenor that would be limited in such a way such as the held a tenor, but if I am generally a tenor to other people's ears, then I finally found a term that also comes to terms with my vocal anatomy. It's fine. So you need to be able to take that and move your move that capability up and down in your range. Does it? And I'm not saying that as like, oh, I'm limited. I'm limited. I can't do anything. No, it does not matter how much training I have with a certain note. It's always going to be limiting because I can't sing that high that easily like other tenors. I'm not going to be able to float up to the top. I literally have to make the same amount of space as a baritone to be able to hit those notes. Like. If I'm to properly hold out something like this ah, and not crack, I wasn't even trying to crack. I have to be like ah, No joke. Do not think that I am giving myself excessive credit and thinking that I'm mistaken. I know my voice, so I am not kidding when I say that it does not matter the training. This is how my voice is naturally, and it has always been that way since trying to sing better overall in my chest voice. It doesn't have to be right away, but if you can just go, uh, 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 and see what happens, see where you tap out at, and that's where you strive to stretch to every day. Let's just say this, whenever I'm going to know a place like this, uh, or uh, without flipping, Mm -hmm. Yes, I try to get and keep those types of notes in my mix. Mm -hmm. It feels much more like what you had me try to get in my voice on a regular mm -hmm. note. It has to be that type of vibrato on those higher notes. Right, that's so why I, I said in your head voice it happens because in order for you... I have to let it play male, to get the whole I mean, picture. It takes, it takes abdominal engagement for everybody, but in order to sing in a pure tone head voice, it just takes abdominal engagement, especially for a male. So that's why your vibrato was more of a wave than a stutter up top because you were coming from the right spot, but in that chest, it was like your body was cut in half. Here's something that I think she missed when I was saying it has to be that. I meant if you were going to sing ah, or ah, in chest voice. So yeah, that 
that's what I'm talking about. Also, I'm keeping it quiet for the fact that I have people talking and I don't want to interrupt their conversation. And I'm not going to even attempt that note above, but that's the concept I meant when I was explaining myself. And she thought I meant, like, <laughs> Which, honestly, it should take the same amount of engagement from my abs and requiring that type of vibrato for anywhere in your voice but i was saying that thing that she showed me is what it's like to use vibrato up top of my chest voice and mix not my falsetto she thought i was talking about my falsetto i'm saying that i was not talking about that i was talking about my chest mix and you were just using here up and this didn't exist at all. This is great for anybody struggling to learn vibrato, anybody struggling with the same stutter vibrato that William has, or someone that's just looking to know how to execute proper vibrato. Maybe you have none at all. This is a great way to learn it. It comes from the diaphragmatic support first. So William, thank you so much for being so brave today. I hope that, that you learned now how to execute that and grow it. And instead of stuttering yes. to wave, cause that's, I, that's just the pinnacle of vibrato. It's what it is. It's what we need to do. So guys, if you thought William sang his vibrato better in, well, maybe minutes instead of seconds, <laughs> then you let me know in the comments box below. Thanks and again, if you want to be the next vocal victim on Sing Better in Seconds, all you need to do is subscribe or, or rather follow us on Instagram and subscribe here too if you're not already. And um, we're going to post a picture of, do you want to be on Sing Better in Seconds? You respond with your name, your age, where you live, and why you want to be on Sing Better in Seconds. And who knows, you could be the next William Rimmer on you this better show. better do it. Oh. Yeah, you better do it. <laughs> We've got a lot of people who want to do it. So thanks so much, William, for being brave with me and bold and being willing to better your voice all for the sake of improvement. I so appreciate it. And we will see you guys in the next one. Say bye, William. That's her song, by the way, Ecstasy. All right, well, maybe you learned something or not. Who knows, honestly, but I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned something from it because I know I did when I went through this one. I don't know about reacting to it. I don't think I learned anything but the fact that, oh crap, I was an idiot. <laughs> As everyone feels that way when they react to old footage of themselves, especially when it comes to something as personal musically as their own voice. You can definitely see what she was talking about now that I look back at it. I just wish I could see what she was talking about in the moment. But thankful for her, I am regardless. I hope that you follow her on Instagram and subscribe to her YouTube channel with that notification bell, whether you want to sing better in seconds with her or not. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.